chapter 3, verses 14 through to verse 17. Dear Father, you've been showing us over recent months that we have a, a land into which we are moving. And we thank you for that, Lord. We're longing for not only Beulah land in glory, but we're longing for the, the land that you have prepared for us here. But Lord, as we were thinking last Lord's Day, even the crossing over is not the prize, but Almighty God is the prize. And so we thank you, Father, that really we already have the prize. We have God through Jesus Christ. But as we now focus our minds ahead, we are excited about what it means for us. So please, continue to minister to us through this book of Joshua. Continue to open us up to see what you are doing, what you promised to do. Strengthen us, we pray as we read your word in Jesus' name. Be with me to preach it, Father, as I always ask, because there's no point in me just speaking. It has to be God. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Is it just me, or is there a phone ringing? Is it outside? It's been going regularly. I just wondered maybe if there's a phone somewhere that's not been turned off. Or if that is the case, then we can turn it off. But if not, then hey ho, on we go. Can you hear it? Is it maybe the fire station or something? Because it's really distracting my thinking. And it has been for a wee while today. Thank you. Can you send people out and then start the message, eh? That's good. Hallelujah. Last week we noted that uh, Joshua had been preparing the people to expect a miracle. And uh, we just so happen to have a banner that says expect a miracle. Because you see, that's our position. Our position is the position that the Israelites were in. Well, tonight, as we read these verses, we see the miracle happen for Israel. And we're standing with the people of Israel at the banks of the Jordan River. We're at the threshold of the, the promised land. And this is a great moment of anticipation for the people of God. But it's not, hallelujah, it's not just about ancient Israel. We are grateful tonight that it's about Zion Baptist Church. As a church, God has spoken to us a promise that was rooted in Isaiah. And we've been called to the land that God has prepared for us. It's not a land that God is preparing for us. 
It's a land he has prepared. He's prepared it and it's ours. First of all, we're going home to glory. That's been prepared. There's a place prepared for every one of us in heaven. And we, we, we look forward to that appropriately. But it's not only for eternity. Ultimately it is, oh hallelujah. And when we get to eternity, nothing else will matter. Is we won't look back. But I don't know whether you know, we're not there yet. And that's why we, get through, we go through all the difficulty that we go through. That's why we go through the pain and the suffering and the upset and the death and the confusion. It's because we're not home yet. But we're going home. And there's a place for each one of us. But it's, it applies right here and now. It would be a, a kind of mundane existence for Christians if we get saved and then nothing happens until we're home in the glory. We all want to get there, but there's a journey to get there. There's, there's a life to live with Christ until we get there. And it would be a mundane life if nothing happened, if there was no drive, if there was no motive to push us on, and we'd just sit down and wait. We would let go and let God. We would no care and let God. But that's not what it is when we belong to the church of Jesus Christ. God isn't interested in us sitting around waiting for his return. We've got, a, we've got a journey to take. We've got a life to live. We've got a mission to be on. And we know that our mission is a God-given mission right here and now. And it drives us. It pushes us on. Just like Israel was called by God to enter Canaan, Zion we're called by God to enter the land that he has prepared, the promises that he has given us. But to enter the promised land means, firstly, to enter the Jordan. And that's what we read of tonight. God's promised it through Joshua. He's told them this will happen. And here it is happening. Does that not excite us? What have you got from God? What has God promised you? Not Zion. What has God promised you personally? Whatever it is you're thinking of right now, I tell you this, you will enter into that promise. You will enter into that blessing. Because in your own experience, that land of blessing that God has brought to you and brought before you, it's already prepared. He's given it to you. He's calling you into it. But you're going to have to go into your Jordan. You're going to have to take the steps required. Church, that's exactly the situation that we're in corporately. There is a land, but there's also the Jordan. And the land lies beyond and the Jordan is flowing. Whatever your Jordan is, whatever Jordan will manifest itself as, It means to walk into the Jordan. But oh, praise God. We're getting through. You see, the, the psalmist talks, I think it's Psalm 77, about 
God leading his people through the mighty waters. It's marvelous. Through the mighty waters. He leads us in, but he doesn't leave us in. He takes us through. Is that not exciting? There's a, there's a bank on the other side. There's a shore on the other side. And it's for us. I don't know whether you can see it. I hope you can see it. Because that's where we're going. I, I, I really hope just before we go on, I really do hope and pray that when you hear me speaking like this or you hear others speaking in these terms, I really do pray that you're not thinking, what are they talking about? Please don't be that. If you need to talk, you come and talk to somebody. But but we're, we're not staying here. Our home isn't here. Our home is there. Whatever that means. And so God has called the people over. And the first thing that happens in verse 15, the people have got up and they're, they're, they're moving, following the ark, following the priests, that are carrying the ark. And what is it that these priests do? They carry the ark of God right into the river. Verse 15. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for the Jordan overflows its banks that the waters stood up in a heap from the city of Adam the water stopped stood in a heap the river stopped flowing down the way because there was no water to flow Because the priests carried the ark into the river and stopped. Remember we saw last week that they were to carry the ark a few steps into the river and stand still. They stood still. Again, as we saw last week, they saw the the size of the task. But they also witnessed the water opening up. If you think of them standing in the water, ankle deep maybe, knee deep, whatever, they're standing there and they're carrying the ark on poles. And all of a sudden, the water starts to move away from their feet. And suddenly, they can see that the water is no longer there. They're standing on dry land. The river was in flood. That's an amazing act of faith by those that were carrying the ark. The water was cut off. Hallelujah. That's our God. A flooding river. Imagine the power of that. We've got a wee river beside us in Kirkintilloch. It's called the Luggy. And if you've had a day and a half of rain, this river rises up and it floods everything down the sides and it's, it's, it's boiling as it's going. That's only a wee river. Imagine the Jordan in flood. Imagine the power in that water. And 
may stand in it. Trusting that God will do what he said he was going to do through Joshua. Trusting that this water was going to part. And lo and behold, the, the ground is dry. The Ark of the Covenant stepped into the Jordan with the priests. It wasn't the priests. It was the Ark. That's where the, that's where the, the power was symbolized. The God that they were carrying, they stepped into the water trusting that God would keep his promise. Imagine what's in their mind. When God parted the Red Sea for Moses and the people, this was just the same. This isn't something new for Israel. In Exodus chapter 14, let's go there and read the verses that I'm thinking of. Exodus 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. Imagine that. The same God doing the same thing with the River Jordan. It was too easy for God to do it with a river. It was too easy for God to do it with a, a, a river that was just naturally flowing. No, no, no. This is almighty God we're speaking about. God doesn't part puddles. He parts seas. Doesn't part streams. He parts swollen rivers. How are you feeling about your life at this moment? What is your swollen river right now? Don't you dare try and cross that river by yourself. Because it will sweep you away. You'll lose your footing because you'll be standing on muddy ground. You'll be standing on wet soil. You'll be standing on sli a slippery surface. And the power of that river will wash you away. But if you go in carrying the ark of God in your heart and you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, God will make the ground dry land. Well, if you're a Christian, you've been there. You know it. God is here reinforcing his, his faithfulness to his word. I've told you through Joshua, this is going to happen. Now watch. It happens. Zion God's told us it's going to happen. Lord, oh, the day, the day when we hear the sound of the, of the water parting and God revealing himself in all of his power, that's going to be a day and a half. Lord, do it. Enable us to cross over. You think, the thing is, <clears throat> what we notice here is the Jordan River is no hindrance to God. So, so throw, throw your situation at God. Throw it before him. Ah, I'll not get through that, Lord. Throw it before him. Let him see it. Lay it down. How am I going to get through this, Lord? Look at this river. 
whatever it is, lay it down and you watch. It's not a hindrance to God doing what God wants to do. That's your God if you're a believer. That's my God. That is the God of Zion. Hallelujah. And the God of Zion is calling us over. And there, there are issues that will rise up. We know that. It will happen. That's just the way it is. But they are not a hindrance to Almighty God. And we will get through. The reality is, God goes before us. Yes, he does. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. But listen to how that verse continues. He will be with thee. He goes before you. He's already in your Jordan. He's already in our Jordan. But he'll go with us. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. They've stepped in. Who have stepped in? The people? Nah. Those who are carrying the ark. The ark contains the tablets of, of the law. It contains the golden jar of manna. It contained Aaron's rod that had budded. Hebrews 9.4 tells us that. In the ark is everything God is really. His word. His provision. His sovereignty. And those who were carrying the ark stood in the water. I'll never leave you, says God. He says in chapter 1, verse 9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. That's what caused, that's what allowed the priests to start, step into the river, take a few steps and stand there. Because they knew that they were not in that river by themselves. They were there under the power and presence of Almighty God who created the Jordan River. It's no problem to him to say Jordan stopped flowing for a while. But who was it that stood in the river first? We are on the edge of our own Jordan. God has promised fruitfulness for us. He's promised us a land of restoration, a land of rebuilding, a land of renewal, a land of healing, a land of freedom. As he's told us in Isaiah 61, 1 to 4. But for the people to get over the leaders need to stand in the Jordan. The leaders need to carry the word of God, trusting in the provision of God, under the sovereignty of God, and stand in the water. Hallelujah. When that happens, the river will part.
we need to demonstrate the same faith that these priests demonstrated. We must step forward, not because we have the answers, not a bit of it, but because we trust that God's word will not fail. God's provision will not dry up. Whatever we need to cross over, God will provide. Whatever we need, God will give. That's our God. And we know that he is sovereign. Whatever he says he will do, whatever pleases him will come to pass. Because he is able to make it happen. Zion, are you not thrilled? We're still camped. Oh Lord, get us moving. The leaders, we need to have a desire in our hearts to get our feet wet and watch them dry. Guided and protected by Almighty God the whole way through. Standing in the water. But oh hey, if you think that's all. Verse 17. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. Wow. <laughs> We're not even going to be allowed to just stand. Lord, can we not just stand here? I mean, we've stood it, we've walked into the river. Can we not just stand here now? And, and is that not enough? You've, you've, you're parting the water. God says to these priests, stand in the middle of the Jordan. What faith that must have taken. They've just seen the water in flood. They've seen it part. And now they have to stand in the middle. That water could come rushing at any time. Stand there until the people have crossed over. Holding the ark. Their initial faith was powerful. But my goodness, this is a different kettle of fish altogether. This is something completely different. This is taking it to a, a new level. But it's every bit as crucial as taking that first step. I hope the elders, and Gary, I hope we're no trembling at this thought because whatever the Jordan will manifest itself as that we need to get through and we need to go over we need to step into that river and stand right in the middle of it until the people get through be still and know that I am God, even in the midst of the Jordan. Brother or sister, for your personal situation, you need to stand in the middle of your Jordan. It's not enough to stand at the bank and watch it part. No, you need to stand in the middle with God. You need to trust God right in the middle of it, that he will continue to hold the water back until you're clean passed over. 
until all, till all your circumstances have been dealt with and you're on the other side. We've got to continue as believers to trust Almighty God that he will do what he says and, and, and stand and experience God's power at work in the midst of my difficult time. Hold him up. Be committed to his word. Trust his word that what he said to you is going to happen. Trust that he will provide everything you personally need for your life at that moment. And trust that he's in control. He is sovereign. This is our God. This is Jesus Christ. When Christ went to Calvary, he went to Calvary knowing that it was the word of God. He knew that he was going to be fulfilling the word of God. Prophecy after prophecy. And he said, it's finished. What's finished? Everything that was said about me has been accomplished for the salvation of my people has been accomplished. He knew that he was on the cross because of the sovereignty of Almighty God. And he himself was the provision of Almighty God so that the people could pass from this world to the kingdom of God. Ah, but you see, it's true for us. Let's never lose sight of that. God says, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We cannot drown in the Jordan River because God is holding it back. Leaders, church, if it's not a concern to God, we can trust Him. We can trust what He's saying. The God who parted or who's parting the Jordan is the God who will keep it parted until the people cross over. And here's, here are the priests. The priests are demonstrating that faith. The priests are demonstrating by standing in the midst of the Jordan with the ark of God, they're demonstrating that they believe that the God who's parting the water will not allow the water to return to its place until all the people are in the promised land. That's our God. That's a God of Zion. That's the God who's calling Zion over. He's saying, if you stand in the midst, leaders, if you stand in the midst with the word, with the provision, with a conviction of my sovereignty, the people will get over. I'm going to hold the river back. I really hope these are no words. I really hope you believe this in your heart, that there's something happening, there's something going to happen in Zion. God's timing will be perfect. He'll hold the water until we've entered the promise. Every aspect of our mission as a church, every aspect of your life. So what are you thinking about? as you think of the of the of the 
the, the, the promised land that we're going into, the land of blessing that we've been promised. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about even in how the, the river will part? We don't know. But I'll tell you this. God's vision for Zion Baptist Church is far greater than our vision for Zion Baptist Church. And there is a future that we could not put together. We could not fabricate it because it's divinely designed and constructed. And if we were to see it right now, it would be overwhelming. But it's coming. What are you imagining? Well, isn't Ephesians 3.20 a right encouragement? That he can do far more than all we could ever ask or imagine. Whatever it is you're thinking about is far better than that. Heaven is better than this. Yeah, it is. And so is the promise when it's going to be fulfilled, when that promise begins to happen, we will realize that even that is better than what we imagined. Do you love Jesus? Do you want Jesus to take you by the hand and lead you through the promised land? Oh, what a day that will be. But folks, it's going to be a wonderful day when Jesus takes us by the hand and we suddenly realize that the promises of God for here and now are being fulfilled. That's going to be a glorious day. I mean, there are, there are, there's a sense in which some, some of this is happening. The praise and worship that we're enjoying. There are some people in the church who have been set free or are being set free. There are others that need to be set free. That's up to God and he'll do it his way and he'll do it properly. But when we get there, oh my goodness me. What a sound it will be when the fetters fall, when the chains are breaking and hitting the ground. What a joyful sound it will be when we just cannot hold back our praise and worship because our God has done something absolutely miraculous right before our eyes. We've got a hope and a future because God is our God. Philippians 1.6 says that he who began a good work will carry it on to completion. And we know that's talking about our faith and it's talking about us becoming what we're supposed to be and, and he'll complete that work. So that when we're in the glory, hallelujah, the work he's started, he won't stop he'll keep it going but folks we need to grasp the word of God and realize that the word of God isn't all about heaven it is about heaven but my word we've got promises for our lives for the life of the church and God will carry those promises on. The work that he begins in this church, he will carry it on to completion. I'm getting shivers. I want God to overwhelm us. And every moment that he does, and every new thing that he begins, we know that he's going to carry it on and we're going to see in the midst of it all and all the way through Jesus Christ to the glory of God. So I say again, we are not crossing over into the new in order simply to enjoy the new. We're crossing over 
to see Christ, to see a fresh vision of Jesus. It wouldn't be heaven without Jesus Christ, no matter what else or who else is there. But the fulfillment of our earthly promise, the promised land that we're waiting to cross over into, would not be worth it without Jesus Christ. And it's all for his glory. It's all by his power. And when we get there, our hearts will just overflow with praise and worship. What a savior. But leaders, what a responsibility. Get into the river, stand in the midst. And then, of course, verse 17, he said, the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. Let me just, let me just emphasize that as I'm thinking about it. Stood firm on dry ground. Firm. We will have a sure footing. And we won't be blown around by influence and winds of doctrine. We will stand firm in that good. But beyond that, it says, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. It's not just the priests who showed faith. It was all the people. Because they had to go in. They had to go in where the priests had been, at the edge of the river, and they had to keep walking into the midst of the river while the priests were standing there. I keep doing that because get this pole in the ark. And the people get to the middle of the river and here are the priests standing there. And the people have got to keep going and walk on on dry land all the way through. So the people of Israel had to show faith in the word of God. They had to show faith in the provision of God. That what we need to get over, he'll provide. But see, when we get over, he'll provide. And he'll not stop providing. They passed through to the other side. They demonstrated faith as well. They were trusting the presence of God with them. I'll be with you wherever you go. Well, we're going. And the priests have taken the ark in. They believe it. We're going. We trust the priests to carry the ark. We're going. Active faith. They had to move forward into the promise and presence of God. It's not enough to stand on the banks and watch the water open, the priest standing in the middle brothers and sisters trickling through. Every single one of us has to take the step and go in and through. Obstacles, challenges, opposition, that's okay. Disagreement, 
That's okay. As long as in your disagreement, you know we're going through. You'll still get through disagreeing on certain things. That's okay. You'll never get through if you stand on this bank. And you watch others going through. You need to move. We need to go when God says go. By faith, trusting Jesus. Trusting that this beautiful land has been given to us. Where the singing will be awesome. Where life will be provided for. Where your chains will hit the floor. Hebrews 11.29 says, By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. Well, it's taken faith to get through the Jordan as well. People, how are you feeling about this? Is your heart beating? We're heading over. But first it means into the water. We trust the word of God in this church. We trust the word of God. We trust Psalm 119 and verse 89 where it says that the word of God has been established in heaven. That means when God tells us that we are crossing over into Isaiah 61, that has been established in heaven. I pray that your heart is warm by that. I pray that the Spirit of God would put that in your heart. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, hallelujah, they shall not overflow thee. Does that make the weight a bit more? Does that make you a bit more agitated? This is coming. God Almighty, may it be soon. Don't bring us this far, O oh Lord, and, and leave us on this side of the Jordan. Can you hear God? Just whisper into your heart. I don't bring to the point of birth and leave you without a child. I don't, I don't bring my people to the point of newness and walk away from them. Aren't you glad? The danger of continuing on and on and on and on, I better stop. Praise be to God. Heavenly Father, we look to you this night and we thank you for your word to us. And we are, we're, we're, there's a mixture of excitement and trepidation, Father, we confess that. We, there's a mixture of that and we ask that you would help us in this. But help us to hear you when you say go. Help us to see the ark as it is raised up and begins its journey so that we can follow on. There are so many blessings that we know you have for us that will enable us to glorify your great and holy name. That's all we're asking for. And our eyes are peeled and we're getting ready 
Father, lead us, we pray. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen.